Welcome to the meeting of the Finance and Strategy Development Committee meeting. Uh, we have apologies from Councillor Hudson, Staines and Moon. Someone like to move uh, Councillor Lawson, seeing the Mayor. All those in favour? Thanks. Carry. Confirmation of the agenda. Oh, sorry, I just uh, apologise for Mr Noon. I'm not sure whether he's going to be able to come all. We've got that. We've just recorded it. Yeah, thank you. Um, we'll move on to item three, declaration of interest. Oh, sorry. Didn't you need to get a call question? Oh, sorry. I'll move to Councillor Tavisic and Councillor Wilson. All those in favour? Aye. Thanks, Carry. Declaration of interest. It's just for noting. We'll move on now to the minutes of the remuneration subcommittee. And um, we've picked up a clearing error here. But it was looking good for <laughs> <laughs> So Jenny will um, advise you of the, of the doc that needs to go in on the page three. Just on the last bullet point, it should be $87.50 a month, not $875. <laughs> So um, I'll ask Councillor Thompson to talk to the to the um, paper. Thanks. Um, well, I apologise for picking up the error on page three. <laughs> <laughs> it's looking like a nice little learner for a minute. Um, the, do you want to move first? Um, oh, well, do you want to add anything? And then move, then Look, I think it's pretty straightforward. The only comment I would make is um, that the 20% of the pool of funds available for extra duties on midway down page two. Um, 9820 made available for councillors taking on significant extra duties for the district plan, plan process and it was noted in the meeting that um, that obviously could be reallocated or not as the case may be further further into the triennium depending on how that's progressed and what the workload is. So um, that was seen very much as a uh, one-off recognition of a particular um, set of circumstances. And there was, as reflected in the minutes, a, a fairly clear view that um, councillors should have the opportunity to um, use their own equipment where they don't wish to be carrying two lots of everything around. Um, and that's reflected in the minutes. But I'm happy to answer any other questions should be. And there was also in the group too. So, uh, well, I'll ask you to move that and we'll get a second to move. I'll also move. Move, second, Councillor Stevenson. Questions, Councillors? No questions? I'll open up for debate. Any debate? Very quick debate. <laughs> uh, well, I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Aye. Right, against carry. We'll move on now to the financial results for the 31st of May. And welcome, Marie and David. Marie, is there anything you'd like to add to the paper? It's, um, I know you've got, you're going to take away some of the, uh, the gloss off the paper because it looks quite good on the paper at the moment, but there are circumstances that are, are going to address um, the surplus. So could you just elaborate? Okay. okay. Um, so uh, results at the end of May, we had a favourable um, surplus of page $8.2 million. Um, just bear in mind that our full year budget is 3.2, so of the 8.2, we've got some fair value gains on the Waipori investment of 4.4 and the favourable depreciation variance of $4 million. Um, just in relation to the fair value gains of, um, for the properties, um, there is going to be regaliations occurring at the end of June, and so that's going to take up some of those. You'll see that in the comments we've added another little um, indicator there and using an R. So what we've tried to do is put more fulsome comments this time because they have been quite fragmented and difficult to understand in the past. And the R indicates that we've got um, a recovery, so we might have favourable revenue, uh, unfavourable revenue and favourable expenditure or vice versa. So we've tried to give some more um, full indications. Just in relation to the overall variance then, what we're saying is that it's going to be very finely managed. Um, you had an update yesterday on the St Clair seawall and the weather events, and so any favourable variance we were going to have has been very quickly mopped up with those. Thank 
do. Uh, questions, councillors? Um, Marie, the, the variance, as you've noted, is primarily, the, the, diff, the variance between the budget and the actual is, is primarily, in fact, entirely um, uh, either non cash, which is the depreciation component, or it's, or it's um, potential cash, um, but it's in the Waikori fund. That's right. So, um, I assume, therefore, if you take that roughly eight million away from the actual operating surplus, you you end up in a situation where you've got a a, a potential cash deficit to budget. But I'm not sure whether that's the case or not. And I'm wondering, are you, and because this is a P&L, but we rate on the basis of cash, mm -hmm. and the favourable variance is sitting in in the P&L and non-cash or non-available cash, um, does that mean that there's actually potentially a, a gap between what we actually rated and the amount of cash that we've actually had? Or is that in, in effect offset by just minor variances in the capital expenditure program? Yeah, it is offset. There is a variance between the operating and the cash. Um, and that's just adjusted for um, different sort of items that we're having to deal with internally. But there will be very little in the way of surplus cash at the end. So while this looks very positive, you just back the non-cash and some other um, items and we come back. And also the um, weather event in the simply a sea wall, that's going to mop up anything. So there won't be any cash at the end. It's very finely balanced. And Taking those things into account, how will it um, how will it look from a cash perspective compared to budget, as opposed to a PL perspective? Um, I probably can't put a number on that at this stage. Um, it won't be very much. It'll, it, it won't be very different. No. Thank you. Absolutely. Just taking that point further, if that event. It will, happened halfway through the year, potentially that could have had a bigger impact earlier. Impact earlier and to and, and that cash flow potentially. That's right. Yeah, but, but I, th I think it's fair to say that we would have held back expenditure on that basis. Yeah. We'd have worked the budget. Um, and I think one of the challenges with this kind of monitoring uh, information is to get, uh, um, if we can, a clearer, more accurate understanding of the actual cash position as we go through the year. So there are um, attempts at the moment by uh, Marie and the team to try to improve uh, our monitoring um, as we go through and we'll be trying to work, you know, we've spoken previously about a, a new format for these uh, reports doing a bit more in-depth work as we go through. Perhaps every three months we have a, uh, a more granular understanding of what's happening in financial terms of the organisation which will give you a clearer sense of what the, what the issues are. Oh, so a question for that then. And if, I mean, we do an annual plan once a year, but, and I think we've all stopped and thought about the expenditure that's come from the weather and the um, seawall situation. Is it possible if we had a better understanding of the cash flow situation that, how would you have managed that if it happened in, say, December? And, and, and how that would have been, so apart from the it off, would you have come, is it better that, We'd get a paper that said actually we have to defer things a bit bigger. Yes, yeah. The, yeah, my understanding yeah. and working with staff is that um, the situation we've got at the moment, we, we're going to be cash positive at the end of the year, but it's, it's going to be minuscule. Um, so it's been managed well within the staff and, and expenditure has been deferred where possible. But it would have been a greater effort made if the knowledge of the event had been earlier. Yeah. then there would have been a, a prior reprioritisation of, uh, of expenditure taking place. Mm -hmm. But uh, staff have given me every confidence to know, to know that at the end of the year when all the accounts are brought to um, charge within the period, we're likely to be in a position where we're almost cash neutral. But what we will have in front of us is the ongoing expenditure for the um, seawall and the unknown expenditure on some of the roading yep. that still hasn't been um, properly scoped. Yeah, and then just to add to that, what, what we have as we go through, particularly the tail end of the year, 
uh, managers come forward with their uh, projected end of year positions. Um, so I think as a management team, we'd be very uh, keen to ensure that managers, once they say that they projected, projected a surplus position, for instance, um, that um, nothing changes unless there's good reason. Um, an unexpected event, for instance, so that there's no end of year spending um, to achieve a budget and um, try to capture the, the surplus if we can. Any further questions? Councillor on, on 5.1, the operating surplus is for the 10 months prior to 31st. The rest of the paper seems to be 11 months. Is, is that intentional? I'm not sure what you're looking at. Sorry, 5.1. Yeah. Summary. Ah, uh, sorry, no. Operating for 10 months. No. That should be 11. That should be 11. It should all be the same. Yeah, that's right. Well spotted. The um, um, uh, DCHL uh, external revenue, um, 1.3 million, uh, un unfavourable. Uh, it's below budget to date, but it will meet budget by year end. Uh, some of the changes and um, the um, reduction or the dumping of some of the Delta businesses, are they going to help with that meeting the year end or is there other factors that will help meet that budget by year end? We're just waiting for the payment through the dividend. It was just the timing of it. So it's a timing issue as much as anything. Okay. And the other thing I had was transport operations. Um, the NZTA subsidies are, are, are below budget. How, how accurate are our estimations of what we're going to get looking forward, never mind what's happened? Um, just a general question. Um, for instance, if we are told that we're going to get a 66% subsidy on some cycleway or whatever, how certain can we be that that actually is going to happen? Is, is there any way that we can no, for instance, transport operations expected more in the way of NZTA subsidies, they got less. Is there any way that we can not have that happen in the future? I might uh, get um, Renu Kabati to answer that as the analyst for that here, if I might. I think we'll find Council of Venice, it's more of a timing issue when it's all about the, the signing off of the project um, before the Excel funds are handed over from. Um, yes, um, the, because you have a three year program, those, um, uh, you, we're on the first year, the second and third year we've got that confirmed, so the subsidy should be fine and, and as um, the chairman said, it is a timing thing and there has been some work that has um, not been able to happen and it'll be carried forward to um, 2013-14. So we'll still get the subsidy later. Yeah. So, okay. so just to be clear, that once the NZTA commit to the subsidy, then as long as we do the work, they do pay the subsidy, they can't just not pay the subsidy. So, the so issue here is we didn't do the work. We deferred the work into this financial year that we've just entered, and so the subsidy will come into this financial year that we've just entered. Right. My question also is, in terms of being able to predict these things, if we defer the work, is it up to them whether they pay the, the subsidy in the next year or does it, is it automatic that the work coming later will still get the subsidy? Um, we, we still have to apply for carry forwards to the NZTA just like our carry forwards. Okay. So, um, but we did that and they agreed to this to that so, carry forward. So, so the NZTA subsidy business is actually fairly reliable as well. Yes, it, great. it is. Just as a principle, you don't want to be uh, running out. Um, significant amounts of carryovers. Um, you know, it's not particularly desirable. So, one of the things that um, the management team has discussed is, as part of the 13 14 financial year, um, we'll, we'll be enhancing our monitoring of capital expenditure uh, within the council so that we aren't spending the budget if at all possible. It's not always possible for a range of reasons. If we can, it should happen. Thank you. Councillor who probably would have been able to remind you more, but my, from my knowledge of being on the Land Transport Committee, Land Transport New Zealand are really now focusing quite seriously on projects for completion because they've had too much money actually promised and sitting in, in uh, uh, jam jars, if you like to call it, 
that can't be used because of resource consent issues, etc. So it's all about now making sure that the money is allocated and spent and prioritised properly. So there is a very good process now from Land Transport New Zealand if you want to um, qualify for the subsidies. So it's all about certainty for everybody. Thank you. Councillor Collins. Mr Chairman, to Supreme Dog, be my ever never ending quest for information and knowledge. Uh, this is something um, on page 510, I think it is, but eight lines down. And it's probably my glasses. Should have gone with big sales. Um, asset operations and mice, it looks like. Maintenance. 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 On maintenance. It's a tea. Right, we'll cut back on cheese, Mr. Rawlings. <laughs> oh, maintenance, okay. It does look like mice to me. Actually, I did hear an ad on the radio this morning, Councillor Collins, on your station. And with a good deal on glasses, so maybe you should look after <laughs> the ad. Can I get a couple of dollars, please? Marie, the asset revaluations which you mentioned, um, they sit within the investment property portfolio, not um, our own miscellaneous property or anything that we take a, a rate from. Our investment property is revalued and the revaluation goes to the profit and loss account for okay. the council as a whole. It doesn't go into the balance sheet, so it does appear in your surface deficit result. Right. Okay. Whereas any revaluation of your uh, land's property does not go to your PL account, it goes to the balance sheet. Okay. And therefore it doesn't appear. Yeah. Okay, thank you. That's a speaker, sir. Okay, this question probably for um Dr. Bid rights. Um, aquatic services, it's a problem with the gym and it keeps coming up again and again. So like, I was just wondering if the relevant committee can bring us a report about what we're going to do long term about this gym because the problem keeps appearing. Yeah. And then the other question is a little bit similar was the visitor centre. This has also been going on for a wee while now. And I don't know what the answer is, but again, maybe if it came to the committee, if if there is any brilliant way to make it, you know, more break even, or do we need to put more money into this area? So I just wondered if both of those would come forward at some There is some work underway with the eyesight, as you're aware, yeah. the piece of work to set up a city marketing agency, the eyesight sits at the periphery of that. Um, they are currently being moved into a more commercial part of the business to sit with property and economic development. And so, um, uh, and a feasibility of eyesight profitability has been done, and I would expect at some point someone to come back to you about what has been planned in order to try and. Uh, That's great. I'm happy to wait for the there. Yeah, and for the gym. Politics, I'll follow up. Councillor Thompson. Maria, I'm really following up my earlier question, and it's, uh, I'm not looking for detail in your answer, or I would have asked you in advance, but it's more around general principle. Um, the, I guess what I'm con slightly concerned about is that if you take that eight and a half million back out, which is essentially balance sheet adjustments, um, you would end up in a situation where you were showing an operating deficit of a small amount compared to a four year budget of, of 3.2 mil. And what that says to me in general terms is that our operating expenditure costs or our revenue, or both, have actually been different to budget. Now, you know, that's not in itself a major concern necessarily, but, it, but it's a it's a potential concern to the extent that you've operated off some assumptions into the next financial year. So that, do you understand what I'm saying? That, that I come from a DHB that's masterful at manipulating balance sheets to turn deficits into smaller deficits. Um, so I'm naturally suspicious. Um, you know, I'm going to use it. I'm going to 
Yeah, no, but, no, but, no, not at all. No, not, not, not at all. But it, 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 absolutely not at all. Um, but do you see what I'm getting at? That we've, we've got a windfall gain, if you like, in Waipori, and we've got an underspend in, in capital expenditure that's reducing the depreciation. And if you back those out, then you're actually, you're, you're, the, the balance of what you're dealing with is actually real revenue and real expenditure. And you would end up in a situation where you had a small deficit. Um, a negative gap, if you like, of about $3 million. Now, that in itself doesn't bother me particularly, um, but my, my question is, should we have any concerns with regard to our forecasting in the 13-14 year if our operational income and expenditure was at variance in the 12-13 year? I think one of the areas that you're missing out in your question is the capital work. Because a lot of that capital work, for reasons, uh, good reasons, has not been undertaken. Well, that's so a good yeah. No, that would, no, doesn't that depend on, well, look, I'm, I'm assuming on my, that line one operating surplus deficit is a P&L, not a cash flow. Yes, so to that extent, I don't think that affects it because that wouldn't be appearing in the P&L. It would be, would be altering the balance sheet and it might be altering the depreciation. You know, which, so. In terms of forecasting, it would be true to say that this would be the first year that we've put the the spotlight on forecasting um, to get us to a, a cash position, a difference between operating and a cash, to the extent that we have. And that's presented us with a few challenges because the way we do our accounts doesn't lend itself easily to that. It needs more fine tuning and that's what we are endeavouring to achieve in the next financial year, which I know doesn't help in this particular situation, but we are hopeful that we'll have that gap um, more easily explained in the new financial year. Um, if I could <coughs> contribute to the discussion. Um, when you set your budgets, there are cash flow budget, as you described, and therefore you take out um, depreciation. When you, when you do your budgets, you don't budget on the basis of depreciation, you look at your capital expenditure needs. When we come to do the reporting, as you see, you've put in there the full depreciation amount. Now my understanding is, um, or the expression is that we fund approximately 40% or 80% to 90% of our depreciation. So when you do your calculation, which I understand what you are doing it, you have assumed that the full amount of depreciation was um, uh, funded by in your P&L. So if, if you were going down the line you were going down, you would have to reduce the amount of depreciation funded by 10%, which would give you that extra cash that you're looking for that bridges the gap. The problem we've got is the uh, development of the budget is following one set of principles, cash flow. We're reporting here on a different set of principles, which are P&L and accrual. So it makes the comparison a little bit more difficult. Um, it does on just looking at this, look as though you've got a cash gap, but it's tied into that capital expenditure budget that was part of the overall uh, annual plan. Does that yeah, well, help? Well, it, it's an explanation, yeah, and I mean, I, my, as I say, I, I'm, I'm not lying awake at night about this gap. I, I, I wouldn't. No, um, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> as a percentage, it's relatively small. But but yeah. but um, my concern is more around if we've used bases to forecast the next year, and we might have some significant variance to that base. Then that could flow into the next year, and I guess I'd want to know about that yeah. early in the next year, not not which, later. Which is why we have the R in there, mm -hmm. so that you can 
filter out those things which are um, sort of money go around type situation. And from that, you can see uh, those areas where our um, revenue targets may not be reached, where, where uh, on the other side, expenditure has been controlled to bring them into line with what's been going on in revenue. For instance, if you want to do that now. Uh, I think, you know, in terms of making improvements to uh, this monitoring information, I think what you're touching on is exactly the point that we're grappling with. You know, how, how do you get an understanding of the underlying cash position, uh, which uh, if it was tipping into the deficit, significantly into the deficit, really should keep us awake um, at, at night. Um, and I think that's, that's one of the issues. I mean, the way in which we constructed these reports um, historically in terms of uh, splitting off um, revenue from expenditure, for, for, uh, for instance. I mean, you know, it's, there, there is an idea that from a council perspective, you should be very clearly able to see the, the cumulative position for each, for each service, each department. And really what you should be concerned about are those problems and emerging problems. Um, so you can have a discussion around um, this, this table and it's the bottom line you should, be, you should be concerned about rather than whether or not um, your expenditure, and your control of expenditure is uh, offsetting um, issues um, on, the, on the revenue side. So, so I, I, I do take the point there is some real work to do for the way this information is presented to you to give you an earlier uh, warning on any problems that what we might be grappling with in the year. Well, if I, in response, if I just say one, one further thing and then I'll, I'll quit. But, um, the, the difficulty I suppose I have as a councillor is that you can manage the cash flow position by simply deferring capital expenditure. Mm -hmm. And councils have done that, this council's done that in the past, um, and ended up just transferring problems to somebody else to sort out further down the track. Um, but you can't, you can't manage the operational expenditure in that way. And so it's difficult to see sometimes, as you say, it's difficult to see which, whether we should have that concern. And, and that's really what I'm saying. Thank you Council Quipman. On insurance, we're having to spend, um, I think it's 107,000 more, but there's no way that'll be recoverable now um, because we're going to have to pay more from now on. Does that also indicate that the council is going to have to allow more in its budget in future years from insurance than we have? The variance for insurance um, results because other assets or projects have had additional insurance requirements after we renewed our insurance program and so some of the budget for that will be sitting in project costs. And so it gets paid out of um, either project cost or it gets paid out of finance and it gets recovered. So you should see that the, the expenditure mm -hmm. and the recovery um, so just about equal each other. They don't necessarily need to look at a higher budget than years to come. Um, that's, that's a whole other situation that does need um, a review. Yes. We have just renewed our insurance for the coming year. We've done that within budget. But we are going to be doing over the next, just to agree with the finance team, over the next few months a ground up rebuild of insurances and what we're covering and what we're not and what we're covering to what level and what we want more of and less of. So we will be doing that, but we have, for, the, for this current financial year we're now in, we have reinsured within budget. And so just on that, is what's happening at Sinclair, none of that's recoverable from insurance. Just the act of God sort of stuff. Okay. Yep, that's right. Any further questions? Well, would someone like to move the recommendation of the report be noted? Then Councillor Stevenson, second Councillor Butcher. Some for discussion. No discussion. I've got the motion all those in favour. Against. Carried. Items of consideration for the chair. No items. Clear meeting votes. Thank you for your attendance.